Hi guys, my name is Marie and welcome to my Corn Wheel. So I thought I would do a monthly favorites video and I haven't done a video like this in a really long time. So this is just gonna be a video about all the things that I've been loving so far this year. The first thing is this Nutty Cloud Coffee. And if you follow me on Instagram at Marie's Kawaii World, then you will see this frequently on my stories because I really love to indulge in this coffee. I've been trying not to spend a lot of money and buy excess things, but this is one of my guilty pleasures. And it is this uh, lukewarm coffee. It sounds really weird, but there's a shot of like cold milk mixed with, I think it's coconut milk or almond milk or peanut milk or peanut butter. It's just this really nutty sweet milk on top of a shot or two of espresso and it's so good. It's really just so different and I like the nutty flavor to it. Um, I like how it's not mixed up and it's just a really different coffee. Another thing that I've been loving lately that's been really popular in Korea is the Einspanner coffee which is a coffee with thick whipped cream on the top and on the bottom there's a shot of espresso and I know that that doesn't sound good but it's actually so decadent and so rich it's something that you can get in place of a dessert and when they put a sprinkle of salt on top it's just heavenly <laughs> another thing that I'm really into lately are these cheese saltine crackers and they're not like the saltines that you find in the US it's actually a really thin dense compressed cracker and there's three crackers and in between uh, the three crackers are two layers of Cream. and I guess it's kind of like a sweet butter which has a slight hint of cheese flavor to it it's just really savory and really good so I've been snacking on these a lot lately I also like these slim crackers and they're kind of like a hybrid between a Pringles potato chip and a cracker and what I like to do is eat these with tuna salad so I'll get a can of Korean tuna which is basically drenched in oil I'll drain the oil I will add a squirt of relish and some lemon juice and the tuna just tastes so good that way it reminds me of the earth cafe tuna I don't know if they still serve that but I used to get that all the time when I lived in LA and then I will scoop um, some of that tuna on top of a slim cracker and eat it next to a salad for lunch it is just so good and I feel like it's also pretty healthy okay I'm not a big fashionista but what I've been loving is my Patagonia fleece I wear this no joke every single day are the other moms at my kids drop off for school are probably like what is wrong with this lady does she have any other clothes besides that Patagonia fleece but I love it so much uh, the reason that I got this was that I listened to the how I built this podcast and Guy Ross was interviewing Yvonne Chouinard I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce his name but um, I just fell in love with him and with the brand and I wanted to buy something from there. I wanted to move to Ventura County and go work for Patagonia. That's how much I loved him and his mission and his brand. And so I looked on the website for something like that I wanted and I saw this fleece. And so I asked my husband to get it for me for Christmas. That was the only thing I asked for or wanted at all for Christmas and he got it for me and I've been wearing it every day since. I just love it so much. So the next thing that I've been loving ever since I got it, and it's been a while, is this notorious RBG shirt. I love Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She is such a boss lady, and I like how she like has a crown on her, and it says notorious because it makes me feel a little bit hip hoppy, but it's still like a really dorky nerd who loves Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, she is such a strong woman, and I admire her so much. She's my favorite Supreme Court justice. I didn't get to watch this movie. I guess I didn't really look that hard for it, but it wasn't readily available in Korea and Japan. I'm probably, sh I think I could probably stream it somewhere but um, yeah I already know her story so I'm gonna watch the movie at some point but I just I love this shirt not just not so much for the shirt but because she's on it okay another thing that I've been loving that I wanted to talk about uh, is my phone case and this is a Rhino Shield phone case I was looking for a really strong phone case so I watched all these videos on YouTube and I saw like I looked for videos where people were dropping their phones out of a five-story building and I wanted to see which one was strong because I drop my phone all the time and I'm always afraid that I'm gonna crack the screen so I wanted a really strong phone case and this one has held up so well. Um, 
I usually end up buying a new one at the end of the year because it gets really dirty and you can kind of see little cracks in it and dents where I've dropped it. But this one case has taken so much abuse. I have not cracked an iPhone screen since I got it. So it's definitely worth the money. I, I like how it preserves the look of the iPhone because I think it has a great design and I hate to cover it up with a case really, but this one preserves the integrity of the design and it's also really strong. So there's a lot of K-Beauty products that I'm loving lately, but I'm just gonna refer you to some of my Korean skincare and beauty videos because I don't want to repeat myself. But what I have been liking this month is this Peripera Ink Velvet Lip Tint and this is such a good lip tint. I think that the color matches my skin tone and I like it because it's really long lasting. Um, some of the lip color comes off when you eat or drink something initially, but then it has a lot of staying power because it really stains your lips. So I love this. So I bought this for seven thousand won or so on sale at Olive Young. I think the regular price is about nine thousand won. Uh, I just want to mention a couple of kids products that my kids have been playing with every single day. The first one is Magnetiles and Valentina, I'm not even kidding you, she plays with these every day. She makes little houses and then she puts her hatchmals inside and then knocks them down like she's a big bad wolf. She has so much fun doing that and she doesn't get tired of it. Sienna likes to play magnetiles with her too, but she builds more elaborate structures. For Sienna, she loves to draw. So lately we've been using my Prismacolor colored pencils and I feel like they're super high quality. She has a set of Crayola ones, but when I sharpen them, a lot of times they will start to split down the middle. And also the color on the Prismacolor pencils is just really good and pigmented and they're really fun and a pleasure to draw with. Anybody watching Queer Eye? I just love this show. There's a new season that came out recently and I just binged on it this weekend. I'm kind of sad because now I don't have any more episodes to watch, but it's just such a feel good show. And if you haven't watched it, I definitely recommend it. It motivates me to sort of dress a little bit better and try to keep my house cleaner and take a little bit more pride in my appearance because I have a tendency to get really sloppy and lazy and that show just makes me realize the importance of just trying to look your best and keeping your house clean. So another thing that I'm really into lately is personal finance and I normally find it a very dry topic. Both my husband and I are terrible at managing money and um, one of my resolutions this year was to become more financially responsible. So I've been listening to a lot of podcasts. Now I listen to Journey to Launch with Jamila Soufflant and Afford Anything with Paula Pant. And they make personal finance a little bit more interesting and palatable for me. And they talk about topics that make me feel like, oh, there's certain goals out there that I can achieve. Because there's this FIRE movement that I discovered, which is financial independence retire early. And it sounds amazing, but given that I'm not working a full-time job right now, it just feels so unattainable. So um, those two people interview people and they develop strategies and tactics for you to use um, to manage your money that feel and goals that feel achievable. So I like listening to them and I slowly feel like I'm making steps in improving my financial situation. Also, um, I've been reading this book called Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and I thought it's, it was really good. It's kind of like the Marie Kondo of the personal finance world because her basic premise is that you should look at your goals and your desires and what you truly love and use that to make financial decisions. So I'm in the middle of the book, I haven't finished it yet. There are some parts that are kind of dry and fluffy, but uh, for the most part, I think it has a good message and I really like it so far. I'm a big podcast listener and what I've been listening to lately, I think I'm almost done with listening to all the episodes, is how I built this with Guy Raz. And you guys have probably heard of it. It's on NPR and it's probably one of the top podcasts, but he, Guy Raz is such an amazing interviewer. And then the people that he interviews are fascinating. Basically what he does is he interviews the founders of all these really famous companies like Howard Schultz of Starbucks, uh, Sarah Blakely of Spanx, Blake Mycosi of Tom's, and I find it just so fascinating. What they do is they talk about their origin stories. They talk about who they were when they were a nobody, when they weren't famous, when they weren't rich, when they didn't have a big company, and their journey from that point to where they are today or where, the point where they sold their company. And I think that there's just so many lessons to be learned in their stories and um, it's also very motivational and inspiring for me. One of my favorite uh, interviews was with Marcia Kilgore of Soap and & Glory and Bliss Spa. She's a serial entrepreneur and one of the things that she said that really stuck with me, and I'll read a, a quote to you, you see people who are so talented or really genius at what they do and they're never really successful, they're always struggling. And I wonder, is it a choice that they make? 
where at one point you say, I am worthy. I deserve this. Why not me? Because you know what? Why not you? And if you're willing to work that hard, why should you not take the success that comes with it? I just find this podcast to be really inspiring and I've learned so much from it. Um, So if you guys haven't listened to it, definitely give it a listen if you're into podcasts. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Check out my playlist right here for more fun videos and I'll talk to you next time. Bye.